Hello, winners, and welcome once again to the Wrong Button Podcast, the show where we talk most things nerd, all things video games, and now a lot of anime. And I am joined once again by the substitute captain of the Straw Hat crew, Mark Quiggles. Yes. Hello, Mr. Play. I am st- Hi, I, I'm so excited for this. You have no idea. Yep. I, I am too. Don't you worry. <laughs> you, uh, I, because we've been talking on Discord. So, yeah, catch you guys up. Uh, we did the the joining of the Straw, Straw Hat crew, where we got all the way up to Arlong Park. Um, mm-hmm. So that gave us Sanji, that gave us Zoro, and that gave us Nami, and that gave us um, heartbreak. It uh, gave us a lot of heartbreak. Uh, but mm-hmm. it also gave us Usopp. Yes. <clears throat> and, like, Arlong Park was definitely this, like, gut-wrenching, mm-hmm. oh my god, Nami, you poor soul. Everyone has a bit of a sad backstory. Yep. And then we were like, okay, the next one we'll do is, you know, after I finish the Alabasta arc. Yeah. So I finished the Alabasta arc. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This arc, feels, I know, right? It feels like if I stopped watching the anime here, nobody would actually be upset with me. They'd be like, "No, you that like be like, I don't know how you're going to get better than this." Um, <laughs> but I, but I am going to be going through the rest of the series. But yeah, you and I have t- talked on Discord a fair amount. Yes, we have. And I said that you know the the villain crocodile of this arc was has been like my favorite anime villain bar none oh he i love crocodile so much he's he's honestly my favorite villain in the entire series there are a couple who come close to him but in terms of who i consider the gold standard for just like just anime villains and manga villains in general it's got to be crocodile his this whole shtick throughout Alabasta is just, just chef's kiss. And he, at no point is his shtick uh, anything, I'm going to say cliche for anime. It's not, I want a challenge. It's not, I'm so strong. It's, it's I have a goal and mm-hmm. I am going to do everything I can to reach that goal. Yes. And that is you're right chef's kiss like there is there was never a point of let's see how you do it it, it was it was nope we're going to there's a problem we need to solve this problem so this goal can be met yeah he's oh, bef- go ahead i just love just also just how intimidating that he actually is and we're probably going to talk about this later on but like he like defeats luffy point blank and it's and it's just like laughable at the time that Luffy thinks he can like square up against Crocodile and that alone just like makes his threat level just skyrocket so yeah and Go ahead. he's just like probably the biggest challenge thus far which you would expect but also, maybe not just because some of the other villains, even after Arlong, were just kind of joke villains, but you basically know that he's the real deal and he does not mess around. I, yeah, and there are some points where he puts, like, Luffy in his place where, like, Luffy kind of does the, he's like, well, if you're the seventh warlord of the sea, I'm now the eighth. And he's like, that's not how this works, kid. Like, <laughs> no. Um mm-hmm. But before that, we go to, uh, so we, we pick up and the crew has made it over uh, Reverse the mountain. mountain. They have met, uh, oh, who's the whale? Um, Laboon. 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 And you got his backstory. Yeah, I, I told you last time. Nobody's allowed to have like a happy-go-lucky backstory. And I meant that. Yeah, and it was, for him, it was like, oh, his his crew, so Laboon comes over, he follows a pirate crew, they make mm-hmm. it up the mountain and back down the mountain, and then they kind of have to do some repairs. Yeah. And they're like, well, look, he's a baby whale, so we're going to leave him here with you, guy who's watching the lighthouse. Yeah. 
and and we'll come back for him. And they're like, don't worry, Laboon, stay here, grow big and strong. We're mm-hmm. going to come back once we find the One Piece, and it will take you on grand adventures because you'll be big enough and we won't have to worry about you. Yep. And it's just like, no, they got beat so badly, they left the Grand Line. Yeah. Poor little Laboon. He's just been waiting there, too, for them. And they just haven't shown back up. Wonder what happens to them, I say winking to you. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Well, I've, okay, we're going to figure that out later. That's going to be a whole arc. Um, then I like how Luffy's solution is like, I'm going to punch a whale in the face. Mm-hmm. And then the whale smacks him. And he goes, okay, so we, we've won one and we've lost one each. So that means we need to go get stronger and come back and fight each other. And the whale's just like, okay, dope. Uh, I can live for this. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And also, I don't remember if the anime did this, but like, uh, Luffy paints like his Jolly Roger like all shittily on Laboon's on face. Head. He has all the scars. Yes, and just says, "Hey, make sure this doesn't leave your face, because otherwise, that's like breaking a promise to me. So that way, Laboon can't keep ramming his head against Reverse Mountain." Which I thought was like really cute, honestly. And honestly, just makes me love Luffy a lot more. <clears throat> Luffy, as far as a, a shonen protagonist, and I think as we start to go through this arc, excels where all the other shonen protagonists have like this shortfall. And we said this early on where it's like, my goal is my, is whatever I want to be. Like, Naruto, I'm going to be the Hokage. So his personality was the Hokage. Yep. Um, Asta, I want to be the Wizard King. His personality is the Wizard King. Yeah. And I think what what truly sets Luffy apart, and I think even Gon uh, hits this now that I'm like thinking about it, is Luffy knows to be a pirate captain. He can't run a ship by himself. So yeah. all he knows is I can bring people together, I can protect my crew, and I can find the best I possibly can to do this. Yeah. It's... Honestly, it's kind of a thing with like a lot of Shonen Jump protagonists. I always like kind of fit them into one of three categories. Either one, they're the goodest good boy who wants to ever good, and that's just sort of their entire personality. There's the goofy, like, haha, what if I do this shit and what if it actually works? And then it always does. And then Mm -hmm. uh, the punk with a heart of gold, but you have to dig deep to get that heart of gold, which I know also describes the first three JoJo's. But yeah, it's also my opinion that the second one's the best one. And the first one, I don't really like that much. (laughs) The the first JoJo Luffy is... is definitely the second one for me. Yeah, he's an absolutely astounding character. That and and like I said, every time every time I go to turn this on, I'm, I'm going for like he's a stretchy rubber man, and this is going to be Saturday morning cartoons. Yep. And even when Mrs. Play like joins me for an episode or two, like she'll be like, "Oh, that's that's uh like that's a that's a serious thing. We're not um." You know, th- that that's not what I was expecting. And I'll be like, nope, this is just going to be gut-wrenching and I'm going to sit here and cry for a little bit, so... Yeah. And, oh God, you are there some cry moments here? <laughs> Do you no. want to talk about the little boy? Are you talking about the one from Alabasta? Mm, not that little boy, or little reindeer boy. Okay, yes. So we'll, we'll get to there. So, uh, series starts off... Uh, or this mm-hmm. part starts off, they go to a town uh, to pick up um, supplies. Mm-hmm. And the uh, town, like, welcomes them. The town that loves pirates, I think, yep. is quite literally what it was called. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you find out that the town is overrun by uh, this uh, this entire organization of mm-hmm. Uh, what do I want to call them? Bounty hunters? Are they? Yeah, like- I think they are bounty hunters. I think that's explicitly said. 
in both the anime and manga, but I don't really remember. <laughs> and I don't have the manga like in front of me right now. Yeah, they're they're bounty hunters. Uh, and then they take them on. Uh, and it was because this is just after the dr- the mini dragon arc. Yeah, uh, which is anime only. Yes, which honestly, I, I was rather impressed with. Mm-hmm. Uh, One so, fact, actually, when uh, this was being dubbed by four kids, they actually skipped that arc and Reverse Mountain. Really? Yeah. They wanted... They... I think they, like, knew the dragon arc was filler, so they just went like, eh, nobody's gonna miss this. Uh, and then Reverse Mountain, I think they didn't want to do it because of, like, the self-harm stuff with Laboon. Mm. Either that or they wanted to get to Chopper faster. <laughs> Both of which could be... Uh could be like are, are, are fantastic i think on my end um mm. like if they if they would have skipped laboon I, I could understand that especially for uh for like the, the self-harm because like when you're watching that and you're like okay this is this is pretty deep yeah um but the island was whiskey peak yes and then they get attacked by a shadow organization i'm gonna call it that uh, mm-hmm. Called Baroque Works. Yep. Which one has one of the. Uh, it has a really good name to it. Um, I I really liked Baroque Works for it because you had you had your numbers, and mm-hmm. then you had your days of the week, and I'm assuming it would have been like months of the year would have been next, like like one through twelve mm-hmm. or one through seven would have been like. You know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, because we had all those, Sunday. Yeah. And then it probably would have gone like, you know, the next 12 would have been months of the year. Well, no, it was holidays next because there was Miss Christmas. Yep. Miss so Christmas. I'm guessing it's like Miss days, Christmas. holidays, or it's holidays, mm-hmm. days, months, and then you're one of the millions and one of the billions. Yes. I'm pretty okay. sure that is the case. Although I don't think we ever meet any of the month people. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's destroyed before then. Yeah, <laughs> um, but they show up, and we learn that one of them, one of the one of the broke works people coming, and that person's counterpart because they're always done up in pairs, is yep. uh, the princess, and I'm gonna say her steward, her guardian of uh, uh, an island called or a country called Alabasta. Yes, and we learn that. She left the island there to come find, uh, to, to infiltrate Baroque Works because they're trying to sabotage her island and mm-hmm. crush it, but we don't know to what end. We don't know what's actually going on in that regard. Yeah. And that's how we meet Vivi and Karu. Yep. Um, and... Princess Vivi is our double agent. She was actually introduced, I think, as Miss Wednesday, I do believe. Yeah, I think she was Miss Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So, like, she was just, like, she was the imposter among them, pretty much. And I like how it was nobody really knew anyone else in Baroque Works. Yeah. It was, hey, go hunt down these two people. Yeah. It's just you're paired off with someone and now you go bounty hunt. And if you have to go like kill your own, you know, that's uh, that like that, that it, you don't really know who you're looking for. They're just going to identify themselves because they're gonna be like, I'm, you know, so and so code name. Yep. Um, and that was really cool. Um, mm-hmm. And we got to we got to see there was the uh, we got to see a few people that were really interesting. We got to see the the. Because I, I know you said, like, hey, some of the powers are going to get out there. Yeah. Um, so we got to see the girl who could change her mass. Yep. That is a really cool power. It is a very cool power. You would think it would be useless, but Oda yeah. finds a way. <laughs> yeah, it, but, I mean, it's... Uh, have you ever seen... um? 
God, have you ever seen, uh, have you played Mass Effect? I have not really played Mass Effect, no. <laughs> there's there's literally a, a point in it where it goes, Newton's a, like, Newton is a motherfucker. Because mm-hmm. one of the ways the Mass Effect weapon and relay can be used is it can fire a projectile and it calculates the maximum point of, like, uh, you know, how the Apollo mission to slingshot around the moon. Yeah. Around every planet, because it's in space, it literally just keeps picking up momentum because there's nothing to stop it until it hits its target. Ooh. And I'm sitting here going like, I, like she she fights with a parasol because it mm-hmm. it felt like um, it felt like her attacks were going to be basic because we are so early in the story and I know that there's mm-hmm. like gear later on. I don't know what that is, but I've seen like clips of gear and. Luffy looks like a Gears of War character, so I'm assuming he can be (laughs) big, strong at that point. Um, But I was like, oh, you could throw a punch and literally just dense, like, like make your knuckles get, like, denser as, like, you go towards somebody and change the mass to, like, carry you through that punch. Um, Right. And so that let me know that, like, hey, control of your power is, like, Mm -hmm. it's all in how you use it. Yeah, it's very much a... The Devil Fruit system just proves more and more, I think, in this arc than the previous one, that the people who have it, in order to use it effectively, you have to know it, like, inside and out. So something as useless as, oh, I can change my mass. Okay, what does that mean? It means I can go all the way up and then just, like, come down like a bullet. And it's like, oh, okay. And then somebody else in this arc, I do believe, has like explosive snot or something. <laughs> uh, it's her partner. Uh, he can like anything he touches or flicks or if it's spit or something like that. Yep. He can make explosive. Yeah, which and then he can that, also eat explosions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's also something where it kind of seems like kind of random. But like you can kind of see the utility of it. That's a bit less so than. Uh, I'm blanking on her name, but I think she was like Miss Five or Mister Five's partner. But I think the one who could change their mass. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think wasn't it? It wasn't Miss Golden Week because that's Mister Thirties. But oh, Miss Valentine's Day. I think it is. Yes. Okay, you're right, Miss Valentine's Day. Hmm. Um. And that one was, that one was fantastic. I I really loved Mm -hmm. theirs. And then before that, I actually really like uh, that we also got to see, um, and I want to say he's, he becomes the first um, official, unofficial, like pirate to join uh, the, the straw hat fleet is what I want to call it. Okay. Um, the ballerina guy, I lost his name. Uh, Don, no, Bon, bon Clay. Bon Clay. Mr. Two himself, the only one who does not have a partner. And I I loved his, I loved, I, I he annoyed love bon me Clay to here, no end. Oh, I see, I hated him in the beginning. And by like the last three episodes, I was like, you've, no, you've totally redeemed yourself. I really like you. <laughs> like, you're annoying, but damn if you aren't really good at your job. Uh, wait, you were annoyed by him at first? Um, yeah. He, I... He was, uh... I guess I can the- understand it. Like, you can... Like, he was probably, like, annoying to a lot of people. I always thought he was, like, funny. I thought he was almost flamboyant to the point of, hey, I'm uncomfortable because you're like, dis- like, you're, you're like, mm, like, ah, this does not feel tasteful. And I, right. reali- I realize in their culture, like in, in Japanese culture, like um, the, 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 the nail that sticks out gets the hammer. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, something so terrible is going to happen to this man. And it's going to be like, well, it's because you came across flamboyant. Mm. and i and i was waiting for that so i was like i don't i don't like this i don't like this character i just (sighs) 
but then, then it ends, he's ride or die. Get... <laughs> but then you get to the end of Alabasta and you're like, oh, you know what? You're actually a real one here. Um, yeah, I him at the end and him, him and he and Sanjay's fight. Uh, yeah. I was since he's like I use a like ballerina. What in essence was like Taekwondo. Yeah, I'm sitting here going like, nah, have you ever watched ballerinas? No, Sanji. <laughs> Sanji should sit down and take notes. Like mm-hmm. he, this would not be a pretty fight. It would not. Um, but before we get to that, so we get we meet Bon Clay. We start to learn more about Baroque works uh, mm-hmm. because he gets all the abilities to touch the the faces, and I like his fruit of just like, nope, I can I yep. can swap faces with people. Mm-hmm. It's really it's a fun power that I really like. Probably one of my favorites, but like not like my absolute favorite. That's a different character in this arc. I was honestly waiting for I at the, at the end before he became ride or die. I mm. was waiting for like you know obviously Crocodile gets defeated, but I was waiting for him to show up at the end and like see Crocodile's face like he hadn't died, and then hear his like goofy laugh like oh oh you're gonna just take up the mantle and beat. I was like oh that'd be really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, no, nope. he doesn't. He does not. Uh, he, for now, is just captured. But really liked him. Uh, we leave that island. We leave the island of the giants where they're fighting. Um, mm-hmm. And then That's we where get you meet to Mister Three, right? Yes, that was Mister Three, mm-hmm. uh, who gets uh, straight up killed at, later on by by crocodile um, for his failure. And I actually, I actually liked his power too. His wax ability. Yeah, um, that's also a really good one. The the powers in in this, uh, and I know that you're reading, uh, you are currently reading Hunter Hunter, uh, yes. which also gets some unique powers. Mm-hmm. I've already seen like a couple of unique powers that I actually really like. The the powers in this and how they're used, especially this arc. Um, especially when we get to Crocodile and what truly makes him so terrifying, mm-hmm. uh, I think blow any of those away. <laughs> wow. Um, but we meet Mr. Three. He gets defeated. Um, I think we, at this point, we start to get to see Zoro's training regimen too, where he's like doing the whole, like just, I, I what would be 45 to any other gym, but for him is like 45 tons, four stacked, and he's just doing the, the basic like uh, katana chop where you just step forward and bring down for like full control upper body. Yep. Uh, and we get to go to Drum Drum Island. Drum Island. Oh, you, you're like way too happy and excited for this. Okay. Um, just because certain things that have happened in the manga recently really once you see it. And then if once I tell you some stuff that has connection to Drum Island, you'll be like, oh, my God, are you serious about this? But also, I do really like Drum Island for a couple of characters in particular. So we go to Drum Island because Nami gets sick. Yes, she got Uh, bit on Little Garden, so... Which, by the way, four kids also removed Little Garden when they were dubbing this. Bad four kids. Yeah. Uh, but we we get to go here, and uh, before they get on the island, they get attacked by the Wapple Pirates. Yep. Um, which uh, has the Munch Munch fruit, mm-hmm. where the captain is able to eat anything. Yeah. And I think he can even eat it and fuse it and combine it together. He's basically Kirby. But he can also like let it go and still be alive, not turn to energy. Yeah. Okay. Like Kirby. Kirby can do that? I mean, Kirby can like suck something up and then spit it out. And let go of his power. But does he let the person go out? So I mean, like yeah. If, if he, if he eats dies. Bottle D, say again? I mean, yeah, but then that person dies. 
Okay. But here it looks like because he, he does it he fuses he fuses people together later on, and we'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, he fuses people together, um, but he's he's got this power because he starts eating the merrily we go, and they're like, get him off of here. And Luffy kind of jobs him. He does. He does his gum gum bazooka, and and that's it. Yep. And he gets away, and then they get on the island, and they learn that everyone on the island is uh, <clears throat> everyone on the island like hates pirates because. Yep. The king abdicated, or the king sent all the doctors away, except for 13, abdicated, became a pirate himself, mm-hmm. and took the 13 doctors. So now there is, uh, there are, quote unquote, no doctors in this, yeah. on this island. Mm-hmm. Except for one lady, Doctor Doctorine? Doctorine. Um, Doctor- Go ahead. Uh, it's Dr. Kureha, I think. But I, th- I think they tell her just to call, just to call her Dr. In. Okay. Like, like I haven't almost seen like in a while. So, okay. Cause that's all chopper is like, he's like Dr. Rin, like almost like doctorate, but I have my doctor in, um, you're right. It is Kureha, mm-hmm. but she, he just calls her Dr. In and that's kind of where I, uh, yeah, where I left that one at. Fair enough. Um, and she has a reindeer that follows her. Mm-hmm. And I was the reindeer. I want to talk about the reindeer. I wanted to cry this entire arc. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I even remember like you texting me like as this arc was happening, just like. Please tell me that <laughs> Hopper gets a happy ending in this arc. And uh, I'm just like, I don't know. Wait, how far are you? <laughs> Cause I didn't want to say anything about Chopper. And you're just like, Mark, please, this boy has been through so much pain. I need him to be happy. I was okay, so I, I was at the gym the mm-hmm. two times this arc hit. So let so to paint the picture for you guys, it is like Two o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday. And that was my saving grace because like sports ball or something was happening and yeah. there weren't people there. Mrs. Play is is on the same level I am working because she turns out at one point, looks at me, I'm like, I'm okay. And I'm like, tears are running down my face mm-hmm. as I am watching Tony Chopper's, you know, Tony Chopper, Tony, Tony Chopper uh, backstory. Yep. <laughs> Which is just a massive gut punch for you on the treadmill. <laughs> hey, he'll get your cardio. Can you can you keep this pace up while you're sobbing? <laughs> uh, so he's he's a normal reindeer who eats the human human fruit. Yes, and that makes him. It gives him human like qualities. Hmm. He can talk uh, like a human. He can stand up on his hind legs. He can think like a human. Yes. I don't... So here's my question. If a person ate the human human fruit, they would just lose the ability to swim. <laughs> I, just, I wasn't even going there. That's like the shittiest one for a human to eat. Okay. Yeah, um, really. <laughs> one, uh, the naming conventions for some of these fruits... Uh, mm-hmm. Aren't, aren't good uh yeah but like the human human fruit makes sense uh yeah. the gum gum fruit all right i can i can still get on board with that but that's 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 neither here nor there yeah. um and this is going to play into a question i have later um mm-hmm. he can think like a human and he can adjust his mass yes does that so that does that mean like when he because he at one point he's like he tries to be with the reindeer and the reindeer are literally almost like you smell different you don't smell like a, a deer anymore so they beat the ever living crap out of him and he runs away yes and very tragic then he goes and he's like okay well I'll try to look like a human mm-hmm. and he heads to a human village. And mm-hmm. they're all like, what a monster. And they shoot at him. Yep. 
And then he finds uh Herluck's flat or her Dr. Herluck finds him like yeah. in in the wilderness. Yes. And he's a quack doctor. Mhm. And he's like, "You know what, Tony? I'll help I'll help save you and I will, you know, or yeah. Chopper, I'll help save you and I will uh teach you to become a doctor." And he does, and they live happily ever after, and they're connected, and no more sadness happens ever. No? I, <laughs> ever. I, don't, I think the anime and manga might be two different stories. Okay, what's, what's the manga story? So, actually, like, one actual manga difference that I'm not joking about is that the anime <laughs> actually made Dr. Healy Luke's a lot more sympathetic, where he's... <laughs> More so just a struggling doctor who accidentally messes up with his patients, whereas in the manga, he, like, purposefully, like, breaks into people's houses of people who are sick, uh, gives them treatments that don't make them better, and then basically takes money from them, and then complains if they don't have enough money to pay him. Okay, I don't like the manga version for him. I actually like yeah, the him. anime version does this a lot better. I don't know if it was like supposed to be kind of a joke, <laughs> like, bad doctors or something or WebMD. I don't know, but <laughs> I feel like that'd be way ahead of its time for WebMD when those episodes came out. Yeah, these were like in the two thousands, so yeah, early two thousands. So this was probably before WebMD was a thing, but. Honestly, if it was supposed to be like a parody of like phony treatments or whatever, then props to Oda, but I didn't really that flew way over my head if that was the case. But anyway, let's talk about the sad shit. <laughs> so <sighs> at one point Dr. Halilux gets really sick and his disease is terminal. And then Chopper finds a mushroom in a book. So hold on, let's let's go before that real quick, mm-hmm. um, because uh, so I the guy I know he says his name is Healy Luke. Every time I saw it and the way it sounded pronounced, it almost sp- sounded like the space pirate Herlock. I don't know <laughs> if you remember that anime, and I was like, I wonder if this is kind of like a a call to that. Um, I don't I don't think it is. Um... I just say Hirilux just because that's sort of how I've always pronounced it, but I've heard it pronounced Hirilux. like five different ways. I don't care. Hirilux. Yeah. It, it, it we all know who we're talking kanji. about here. Um, so one, he, he does train Chopper, he teaches Chopper to read. He mm-hmm. teaches, uh, he flies a pirate flag uh, in his in his cave that he lives in. Yep. And it has cherry blossoms on it, and mm-hmm. he's constantly telling Chopper about uh, Chopper about um, uh, like, hey, pirates are amazing. Anyone who flies this flag, if you ever see this, it mm-hmm. means they are going to be able to do anything that they want because they have that kind. And it's supposed to be like they have that kind of drive. Yeah. Um, not necessarily that they're criminals, but he's like, if you're brave enough to brandish this, like that person means it because they are willing to risk everything yeah. to, to fly this flag. Um, and I, I thought that that was absolutely brilliant uh, for him to be like, this is, this is why I fly it. This is what it, what it actually means to me. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a really good scene. That and kind of gets yeah. overshadowed by something that comes right afterwards. Well, when he first meets Chopper, he's like, don't worry, Chopper. I would never attack you. I would never shoot at you. I would never hurt you. And when he finds out he becomes terminal, he's like, oh, fuck. I've made this codependent character. Mm-hmm. And I need him to be able to kind of live on his own. Yeah. And so he he does he does it get out of he, like get out of here can't you see I don't want you anymore just yeah. leave. It's it's heartbreaking. 
and the most the, tragic it's the most tragic backstory in the series so far and then chopper like goes out and snaps off an antler as well as like like breaks his leg Mm-hmm. and comes back he says look you said you'd always treat someone if they were here so now that i, I get to be with you right because and you're just going like oh no oh kid mm-hmm. like oh oh yeah. oh that that's how you know it's gonna be painful um uh but then you're you're right so uh, Chopper finds out he's sick. Mm-hmm. I think Chopper finds out he's sick when after he's been like expelled the first time before he breaks things to come back. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the he goes into or he breaks into a uh, Haley Luke's house and he finds a book with a yeah. mushroom that has a pi- that has the pirate symbol next to it. Mm hmm. And he's like, that means it can cure all diseases. Yeah. But. That's not that's not what that symbol means. We both know that. (sighs) Do they even show you that? I don't even think they showed me the symbol when he was looking at it. I think they do show it. I'm going to have to, like, go back and look, but I'm pretty sure they do show like the skull and crossbones. This is poisonous thing. Mm-hmm. But then Chopper's like, Oh wait, that, that symbol just means it can cure anything. So let me go find that mushroom. It's probably somewhere on the Island. And so he does. He finds it like beating all odds. Cause I'm pretty sure he gets beaten up pretty bad in the process. Yeah. He gets, a. Uh... He also gets uh, like attacked by the reindeer again. Yeah. Loses the book. Mm-hmm. Gets the mushroom. Um and and brings it all the way back cuz he apologizes for breaking a book uh, mm-hmm. or like losing one of his precious books and he the hey, the doctor yeah, he comes back with the mushroom. He goes, "I found it. It had it had the pirate flag, so it can it can protect you." And <sighs> yeah, you know, it just embraces Chopper one last time. So I have, I have a question for you. So guys, this is going to be a longer podcast. So <laughs> feel free to break this one up in parts because we're going to cover some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Because we haven't even do- dove that much into Alabasta itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still on preamble here. Um, yeah. The... So, Chopper... Chopper gives him this, and they, they brew it into a tea. Yep. Now, I, th- I took it there were, like, two ways that we could have... We could have really looked at this, right? Mm-hmm. One is... This is my child. My child brought me something. I'm going to drink this because, you know, my child made... Like, we all made something for our parents mm-hmm. that was disgusting. And they were like, mmm. Yeah. Play-Doh spaghetti. It's delicious. <laughs> so I, I took it that it could have been that way. Yeah. But we don't know what his terminal disease was. So I'm almost also wondering, like... Because he was going to die anyway. He was going to just take Chopper's thing anyway, just so that way he could pretty much die a quicker death, basically. Was it going to be so painful and horrible that what Chopper did was actually mercy? That's kind of how I chose to look at it. It, I think it's a bit up to interpretation. Personally, I think it was a case of, hey, my disease is terminal. There is no cure. Chopper went through all the trouble to get me this mushroom. I may as well just take it. That way, at the very least, he can feel like he helped. And that will, like, light the fire in his belly to be able to cure anything. Uh, Rather than just, like, say, 
no, that thing is going to kill someone. Uh, and just like kind of crushes hopes and dreams or something. And then we get the call uh, that something has happened to the king. Uh, the king at this point has ordered every doctor to be exiled except for the 13 best surgeons. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I know in the United States, like we people like doctors will make fun of surgeons. Surgeons will kind of like, it's kind of like that, you know, military yeah. camaraderie where it's like, ah, uh, and Herlick goes to Dr. Ian and is like, Hey, something happened. And she's like, you know, it's a trap. And he goes, we're still doctors. We can't just say, no, it's a trap and wash our hands of it, mm-hmm. which kudos to him. That was, that was beautiful and brilliant. Um, the, and he's like, Hey, we both know I'm dying. Yeah. One here, here's the medicine I've been making. That's going to cure the Island. Uh, cause that's what his whole goal was. And two teach chopper to actually be a doctor. Yeah. And she's like, no. And he goes, look, you're not actually following up on your Hippocratic Oath, so now you kind of have no choice but to do this. Um, mm-hmm. Do this thing or else, by the way, I have to go. And then he he goes forth and, you know, ends up yeah. getting, the king says it's a trap, and he's like, okay, good. No one was actually hurt. Everything's going to be okay now. Mm-hmm. So okay, he makes tea right then, doesn't he? I think he does. Yeah, I so think I the wonder- mushroom like comes into play with the tea. So it's literally like they were going to kill him in the most horrific way possible, and he's like, "I can at least go out on my own terms and drinks mm-hmm. the tea and dies before they can kill him." Yes. So there's pretty much no point in not taking the tea. Yes, and also that is a bit of a benefit to Chopper since that means he can like be inspired to cure any disease since it's the disease that killed uh, Hiddeluks and not the actual pirates mm-hmm. or the king rather. Yeah. So that sort of contextualizes Chopper, which for a cute mascot character in a manga and anime is pretty is pretty deep. <laughs> it, it, that I didn't even realize he was a mascot character, but I guess you're right. He fits all the all the definitions mm-hmm. of that, doesn't he? All the criteria: small, cute, perfect for plushies, voiced by Ikue Otani. Um. Yeah, and try that, not to hear Pika Pika every time Chopper talks. Oh God, that's what it. You, that's right. You said that. Yeah, or Morgana Persona Five. <sighs> <sighs> the so uh, we get there, and uh, the Straw Hats get there, and they're like, "Look, we just need a doctor." And they say mm-hmm. that there's one quack doctor in the old castle in the in the Drum Rockies. Yep. And Luffy has to carry Nami and in the San- end Sanji on his back. Yep. Uh, Climbs up the tower with like blood coming out of his hands from the harsh weather and pretty much the harsh way he has to like go go up basically. Gets into a fight with uh, Snow Rabbit Polar Bears. Yep. Um, Befriend Snow Rabbit Polar Bears because yep. he can't fight them with Nami on his back because that would only hurt her. Um, mm-hmm. But he has to get all the way to the top. Uh, he gets he and Sanji up there and um, and uh, they, they meet this doctor and also this reindeer who ends up treating and properly diagnosing uh, Nami. Yeah. Uh, and I, all right, so I have a few questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the town where that, they, when they're like, they're like, Hey, go up here. There's uh Dalton of the guard. Uh, yeah. Dalton, who's the captain. 
did he eat a fruit or are there just were creatures? I think it's just their were creatures. There there are people who can like be like half animal in one piece, which mm-hmm. is something you'll see like way later. Uh he's such a minor character though that I doubt Oda had that like figured out so early on. It could have been that he just like ate a devil fruit though. I'd I'd have to like look it up since it's just been so long. I do have the arc, but uh but I, I, I did I did find that. Um mm-hmm. And it was just one of those things. Uh, so Wapul comes back uh, when they're all up there. Uh, Luffy like wakes up and sees Chopper and is you know does his his uh, pro tag thing where he's like, "Oh hey, uh, you're 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 a reindeer. I'm gonna eat you for dinner." Sanji, there's a reindeer, and Sanji's like, "I love deer. Who doesn't love venison?" Yeah, who doesn't love deer meat? Um, and they kind of chase Chopper around. They call him a monster. They call him a few things. Uh, oh. And then at one point they're going to close a door and Chopper yells at them. as like, don't close the door. And he's like, it's cold. And he's like, I'm closing. He's like, if you do that, I, I think he even says like, I'll kill you. Like he yeah. goes, I will end you. Um, mm-hmm. And then Sanji goes, Hey Luffy, come here. And you look up top and it's snowbirds. Yep. Uh, and and uh, it's like, oh, shit, who is he? And it's like, oh, he's a doctor. They kind of get the backstory then from Dr. Ian, which is what we just went over. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Walpole shows back up. And uh, we get probably some of my, like, favorite favorite scenes. Yeah. Um, because, uh, because doctors are outlawed. Yep. Chopper flies the pirate flag of I'm going to call him Herlock. Uh Herlock <laughs> on the castle. Yep. And Herlock's like what is that get that d-? or I'm sorry, Wapples like get that down and mm-hmm. Luffy's like wait, whose pirate flag is that? I don't know that flag. Uh And when he like goes to blow it up and shoot at it, Luffy gets up there and grabs the flag so the flag like doesn't fall. Yep, And he goes, anyone who is willing to fly this flag, he's like, should never be made fun of and it should never be destroyed or tarnished. It should always be allowed to fly, you know. And I was just like, oh, wait, 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 wait to reinforce oh, yeah. this for the, for, the, for the sweet baby boy. Yep. <laughs> just, just what Chopper needed to hear. I need a moment. <sighs> <laughs> oh. And then Luffy and Chopper get to team up and fight uh, Wapple. Wapple and his... Like his goons. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then, of course, like they beat that, and he's like, I'm going to join them. And Dr. Reen is like, how dare you? You don't get to leave. You're not strong enough. Why do you think you're a man? And like, does the... She does the reverse of what, uh, you know, Herlock did, where he's like, oh, you know... Mm-hmm get out of here. She's like, no, you have to stay and forces him to like run. Yep. And then fires, uh, cannons into the sky that infuse with the clouds and make it make the, the islands cause they are the, the mountains cause they look like drums. It mm-hmm. it's in the clouds though. It just looks like a giant cherry blossom tree. Yep. And it looks like that might be like a permanent thing too. Uh, I think we don't really get to see Drum Island much after this arc, but I'm pretty sure uh, it is a bit of a permanent thing. Or at least very much a thing that people at the very least like remember and will recall. That, And I'm actually looking at that screenshot. That screenshot was... Well, or that, like, that, that scene was stunning. It was, honestly. Um, snowflakes, you know, as, as delicate as they are, just like cherry blossoms. Yeah. Uh, One of my favorite gifts in One Piece, actually, is just one of Chopper just staring up at the snow as, like, the cherry blossom snow comes down. Before he starts ugly crying? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Man, of all things to get memed into existence, that that was not one that I was expecting. Yeah. And I like that Chopper's like, uh, hey, I don't have... Uh, Chopper, uh, towards the end of that, is like, oh, I don't have... Um, uh, I, I don't have... Um, I don't have my doctor stuff. And they were like, oh, but uh, you're... Uh, uh, crap. Sorry, I'm trying to think of it. Um, mm-hmm. But your backpack's in the back here. Didn't you do that before you left? Like, I thought that's what you went to go do. And he goes, no, I got, I got like, horribly assaulted. And that's when you realize that it's like, yeah. no, she knew it was time for him to go. And, you know, mm-hmm. that was... Uh, so... Straw hats now have a doctor. They do. Um, mm-hmm. very, oh God, was... very cute doctor. He loves cotton candy. I oh, I haven't found anything about cotton candy yet. Um, oh, well, I guess spoilers, but that's his favorite food. Oh, his favorite food's cotton candy. I could see that. Um, yeah. I have, okay. I have I have a question about his other one of his other abilities, real quick. Okay, um, and maybe they'll explain it later. And I don't know. Hmm. He has uh, this. He has this medicine he can take. Um, mm-hmm. The rumble ball. His, the rumble ball. Thank you. I was about to actually have it pulled up over here, so that way I can do this. Um, he has the rumble ball, where he can turn fluffy. He can kind of make himself bigger and stronger. And the mm-hmm. other thing that he can do is uh, is like he can he can be like okay, target lock. Hmm. And he like puts his 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 hooves together, kind of like if you were to like stack your hands on top of each other with like mm-hmm. th- one Almost thumb facing like up, one thing a facing down, ha, essentially. Or or like the Kiko ho, and he's mm-hmm. able to use it to identify their their weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Does it ever explain how that works? I don't really think it is. I think it's just a combination of just him getting like extra strength combined with the fact that he has a lot of knowledge of like bodies and stuff. So whichever point of your body is the weakest and most exposed, that's like, that's sort of just like how he can just do the best damage. Basically. I'm pretty sure that's just how it works. It's nothing too, too deep, but it's yeah. almost like he created the limitless, the limitless uh, drug. A little bit, <laughs> but yeah, that's just sort of a thing with. Uh, that's just sort of a thing with a lot of devil fruits like choppers. That I think you may have already like heard this term, but zoan fruit, where basically you eat it and then you get like the abilities of certain animals. So, like, Chopper ate the human human fruit. He gets basically the senses of a person and can think like a person and can kind of turn into more something more human-like. Whereas, like, Pell and uh, the... Miss Merry Christmas? Oh, I was going with the, with the jackal who could... Mm-hmm. Oh, Miss Merry Christmas, yeah, she turns into a mole. And then there was the jackal who uh, who ate the, the dog the dog dog fruit. Yeah. Um, or rather the gun that ate the dog dog fruit <laughs> yes okay so there was the there was the gun that ate the dog dog fruit and then there was the the other the other guardian of alabasta who yeah. who does that um mm-hmm. and mind you uh they still do have um vivi and karu who is her supersonic duck yeah um which by the way supersonic duck 10 out of 10 best name mm-hmm. um but after after they leave that, uh, they they leave there. There's like one which almost felt like a, uh, it was like almost a joke power. Um, but mm-hmm. there was a a ship that was broken down. It was the man with many faces, um, yeah. and we met Mister Two, Mister Two Bon Clay, um, who is like uh, he slaps Luffy and then can like change his face and he touches everyone. Mm-hmm. Except for Vivi on the ship, and can change his face into them, and, and like puts on a show. Um, yep. 
which I just now realized it says he's Mr. Two and he has two uh, swans on his back. Yep. Um, oh, there's, sorry. There's also, fun fact, uh, recently there was a One Piece survey of like the top 100 most popular characters. Guess which position Bon Clay ended up in second. for that one? 20 second. 20 second. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know someone was looking at that like okay he's on the list i he has I, know, to too. I know some of the picks in that poll were like meme picks but i'm starting to consider because one i think like bon clay is actually that much of a popular character but also was that also intentional <laughs> where just his like fans of his were like, all right, we're going to vote for him, but not that much because they probably figured eh, somebody else who's more popular is going to get number two, but we can aim for number 22 for Bon Clay. That's, that is fantastic. I, mm-hmm. his character, like I said, his character, I was, I was worried that they were going to do like, it was going to get really discriminatory, very quick towards him. Right. Um, and I, I was like, I was like, I don't like your character for the aspect that you're flamboyant, so therefore you're a joke, right? Um, but luckily, like One Piece never uses his flamboyancy as like, a, oh, you deserve what's coming to you, basically. Which I like that his bulbous design at the bottom is a little weird. Yeah, it is, but that's. That's just sort of his way, you know. It's very flexible. I, but we met Mister uh, Mister Two, yep. and oh, I forgot to say at the very end of Drum Island when they're leaving, Dalton is given a letter from somebody, uh, along mm-hmm. with Luffy's bounty picture, and yeah. he's like, "Hey, uh, when you see Luffy, can you tell him I'll be waiting for him at this town? Uh, <clears throat> I'm a." Uh, I'll be waiting for him. And it never gets to him. And then they all la- land in Alabasta after <laughs> meeting Bomb Clay. Yeah. Uh, so who else? That leaves us now into Alabasta. Yep. Uh, the port town of Nanahana. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where would you like to start with Alabasta here? Um... We can, like, pretty much start wherever. Like, I think, like, Crocodile has a really good introduction kind of here. That's always something that kind of stuck out in my mind. Where you sort of have that one scene of him with the rest of Baroque works. Uh, Mr. Three is basically said, uh, Sir Crocodile, I have pretty much failed in my endeavors to capture the Straw Hats at Little Garden, but I'm here now to help. And Crocodile is just like, nah, you've disappointed me enough. And then just chucks him to the banana gators that he has. Oh, that's right. I I tell you, and the banana gators, I, I think I even messaged you where I'm waiting for the joke uh, for this series to kind of be what they did in uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. Where it's mm-hmm. like, the king has a bear. Oh, you mean his platypus bear? No, it's a bear. You mean a you mean lion a bear? bear? Yeah. <laughs> Nope, a bear. No, it's just a bear. This town's weird. <laughs> yeah, Oda also like does a really good job making animals. <laughs> but yeah, I freaking love that scene, mostly because it's a good introduction to Crocodile and just like how dead serious he is about his goals. Yeah, and it's like this is this is what we're going to like this. This is what it, it's about. This is, this is who we're going to fight. This is uh, like, I won't tolerate this type of failure again. Yeah. Um, and he does do a good job of making an example of that. Um, mm-hmm. And then we get, into, Oh, we get into the town. So after, Oh, we also, is this where we also see him like save a town from uh, attacking raiders? I think this is, yeah. Uh, yeah, raiders are attacking a town, and Crocodile comes out and, like, 
creates a sandstorm that like wipes out the raiders. I don't even think we see what happens to them other than they all like are there, you know, beaten and the Royal army who is on the way to defend them shows up and it's like crocodiles here. And the people are all there. The people are cheering for him and he's, and he's like annoyed by it, but also like, this is what it needs to be. Yep. Um, you're right. That's a fantastic introduction to, uh, yeah. To crocodile. Um, but then in the port town of Nanohana, uh, mm-hmm. Luffy does the, the protagonist thing where he needs food. Yep. And so he, he basically like tries as soon as he can to just gun for the nearest restaurant to stuff his face. And I think he ends up finding at somebody, an old man's house who has a, uh, who has dance powder. Mm-hmm. Uh, he tries eating it. It's disgusting. So he decides he's going to burn it and makes yep. it rain. And that's our first introduction to dance powder. Yep. Um, uh, and then goes, go ahead. Do we want to talk about like the straw hats getting like new outfits here or nah? Um, yes, let's go ahead. We can talk about the new outfits. Um, I love the fact that like they, whenever they're in like a new extreme kind of environment that they all just like get a new outfit to sort of match with the locals and whatnot. I think that's really awesome. I kind of wish like more like anime and manga series like changed up like the outfits for characters. It like, it really into- does feel like, hey, here's your Shippuden arc, here's your serious fight arc, and mm-hmm. here's your like, hey, they're old, they they've done the thing arc. Uh, yeah, I realize that's all just like pretty much going on going on uh, Naruto right there, but um, Black Clover does it. Time skip happens. Asta gets a new arc. Uh, mm-hmm. I wish Goku gets it like twice, and Vegeta gets it once. Uh, when yeah. they go, when they go to the other planet and the planet, they wear the garb of the people of that planet. I wish that they would have done that. Um, yeah. but they kind of just like update their geese a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hunter Hunter. I, I really wish they would change up some of their looks. Yeah. Uh, I am going through Hunter Hunter right now and I get why like gone Killua, Leorio, Hisoka and Kurapika all like keep their outfits each time but really wish they would like change it up a little bit i gones is personally the weakest out of all of those but that's not yeah. right there i i do like kurapika's design if they like keep his design consistent throughout then i'll be happy but uh i'll i'll let you see that cuz like yes he get i i love his like chinese like martial artist yeah design um because that's kind of what gohan had in the beginning of like dragon mm-hmm. ball and that's kind of what they're i think they're going to do to goten and i'm I'm actually more excited for that design and they give it to t yeah TN, and tn and dragon ball gets the most like character update yeah um let's think about <laughs> that character uh so i i think here's where because i know previously when we talked about sanji sanji in the beginning is he's brock he's he's like obsessed with women um he wants to be the knight in shining armor he buys them dancer outfits yeah (laughs) and i'm sitting here going like you know what this is good fan service um i know everyone one of the things that everything tells me online is like wait till nami's glow up and i'm like i want to see her glow up with this (laughs) (laughs) nami honestly i think gets a lot of outfits like later on that i really like she has one in the manga right now that I think is really dope looking. Yeah. Um, her and God, I can't even Nico say like, which one is my favorite one yet, but Oh, okay. Because you haven't met that person yet. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Um so yeah, but like here I think like the Alabasta drip is like really nice. Uh, uh, and I like when they get covered up later because, like, they 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 wear traditional like, hey, we're in the desert garb, yep, loose fitting clothing, 
that's still thick enough to like protect you from the sun because you're mm-hmm. in a desert. And I love that Sanji's just like, why are you guys covered up? What? No, no, I bought you beautiful dresses. Why are you covering them <laughs> up? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But Luffy gets back to the bar or to go get food and mm-hmm. he ends up knocking two guys through a uh, through through walls because that's what he does. One is Captain Smoker. Yep. And the other one is Port Gas D Ace. Port Gas D Ace. Which, by the way, I, I'm pretty sure you could protagas like you could change him to like protagonist mm-hmm. <laughs> he feels like he's the protagonist of his own story and his oh, story has sure. already come to like his story is already like he's like nope i'm already where i want to be um mm-hmm. now i'm helping the protagonist of the story that i'm attached to because he is yeah. part of um whitebeard's crew mm-hmm. yeah and, whitebeard. and they're looking for the traitor blackbeard yeah I'm guessing that'll be addressed later. That will definitely be addressed later. But not in this arc. You still have like four or five more arcs before either of those two characters become relevant. Um, well, okay. now, next arc, you'll see one of them. All right. So next question for you. Mm-hmm. Monkey D. Luffy. Yes. Podcast D. Ace. Yes. And I'm pretty sure it's Gold D. Roger. Yes. Does that get addressed? That is a mystery that I can't tell you about. Not because it's a spoiler or anything, but because I, nobody actually knows yet. We still have, that's a mystery in the manga that we still have to decipher. Um, because one of the, yes, the D is significant for some reason. One of the one of the things that uh, is great, and we kind of get to see towards the end of this, is like Captain Smoker is this brilliant barometer of of like who's a who's like a real who's a real pirate. Yeah, um, because he he beats Luffy flat out in the beginning, mm-hmm. and then he also would have beaten Luffy at Alabasta. Mm-hmm. If it weren't for the fact that Ace shows up. Definitely. And Ace sits here and uh, he and he and Smoker are like, he, Smoker's like, look, you and I can do this all day. Like neither, like we will be stuck in this battle until we both keel over. And it's whichever one of us is conditioned better. Yes. Um. <sighs> So it's a lot of we you're seeing a lot of devil fruit characters this time around last podcast. It was just Luffy and buggy, but now hope you love this power system. Cause you're feasting right now. <laughs> this power system is, is so unique mm-hmm. because like, so um, cause I'm looking at a picture of Ace right now. Um, Ace is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful man. Um, he is who looks like he grew up on destiny isles a little he, he's got po- the only difference is he doesn't wear a shirt he's got poofy shorts and big feet or big shoes at least yeah um and tattoos he, out the wazoo i oh that's right he has a uh, white beard's crest on his back yep and, and one on his arm what is okay what is the one on his arm uh, something that's going to be important way, way later. <laughs> okay, because it, it's ace spelled backwards and or spelled incorrectly and corrected. Yeah. Okay. Um, and he helps them and Smoker kind of like lets them all get away again um, with ace mm-hmm. to start making their way around. Right. Um. Here's okay. So I want to know how the power because Ace ate the flare flare flute fruit, right? Yep. 
smoker ate the smoke smoke fruit or whatever i don't know what it was called mm -hmm. like a smoker smoked a cigar um yeah which by the way in four kids uh they actually removed the cigar entirely but didn't remove the smoke that came out of his mouth that's uh and they you said they also <laughs> called him chaser so yeah um, i want to know so like there are points where like it looks like like Ace is on fire, his clothes aren't affected. Yeah. <clears throat> However, is it like he uses his hands primarily? If he took off his shoes, could he use his sh his feet? I like I, Luffy is the only one so far that like there's there's some sense that it's made. Um, and Crocodile mm -hmm. later. So Crocodile's right. power can affect his clothes. Luffy's power cannot affect his clothes. Like when he swells up mm -hmm. or anything, his clothes like. Like they they extend, but like you see him do like the the hey I'm big and my buttons are doing the buttons. Yeah, my buttons are about to pop here. <laughs> However, but, Smoker and Ace, like how how do we know what their power like their strength is with this power? So the there are three different types of devil fruits. There's okay. Logia, Zoan, and Paramecia. Uh, I'll start with zone fruit. That lets you basically have the abilities of an animal, basically. So that's what Pell has. That's what Chopper has. Uh, that's what Miss Merry Christmas has, etc. So, like, if you were to eat something like the dog dog fruit, basically, uh, then you would basically have like better sense of smell, uh, better sense of hearing, and then you could basically like turn into a dog, basically. Okay. And assuming they, like, run faster or something. There's Logia fruits, which imbue your body with a specific element. Kind of like with how bending works in Avatar The Last Airbender. So that's what Ace has with the Flame Flame fruit. That's what Crocodile has with the Sand Sand fruit. So you could basically just turn parts of your body into that one element. Be it fire, sand, smoke, whatever. And you can basically use that to attack and basically turn parts of your body into that element on command. Mm -hmm. basically. And it doesn't really affect you. So if you want to like make your torso on fire, then you're not going to like burn to death. All right. And what was the type of fruit that was? That was called Logia. Logia. And then, okay. Then there's Paramecia fruit, which is something that Luffy has. Uh, we haven't mentioned her yet, but Miss All Sunday also has that type of fruit. And this is the most complicated one because it's just other. Paramecia fruits are just the other category for devil fruit. And sorry, so I'm looking up. So para, uh, para is, of course, you know, Latin. Uh, mm -hmm. Defense, protection against that which protects from, uh, toward off to make ready uh, and it also has it could be other so or i'm sorry beyond so yeah so i take it these are the uh oh god these um, are your weirdo powers but it also feels like these are the most ambiguous powers so like yeah. smoke has to use the properties of smoke you can't like he I don't. Well, I guess he could make it denser by putting out more, but he can never be like, "I have a smoke baseball bat and I can hit you with it." Because no matter how much smoke you put somewhere, you would never be able to do that. Right. Something would have to contain it. But you could make it like, "Hey, you're inhaling this, and there's so much that's so dense right now that it would fill your lungs and kill you." Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, Ace could never make a flaming baseball bat and hit somebody with it. Right. Okay. Try to make sure I can I can see how these powers mm -hmm. break down. Yeah. <clears throat> also, if you have Logia type fruit, you can just fly. That's, That's the one also that Ace... not something that ever gets explained, but it just is a thing. That's the one that Ace and Smoker have. Yeah. Well, I mean, with Ace, like if you're thinking about like forcing something out of your body, mm -hmm. like I, like okay, propulsion. That's how rockets work. Smoker, like okay, I'm now less dense than air. I can float up. Uh, okay, but crocodile. How does sand let you 
uh, float. Uh, sand bending was a thing in Avatar. Like I don't know, they they could create right, mini sand tornadoes. <laughs> I, I don't dirt devils. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you can fly with that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and cause, okay, so Ace is also like we can tell Ace has been working as a pirate slash sailor for a while. Yep. First thing he and Luffy do when they meet each other, other than like, oh, hey, I haven't seen you forever. Hey, let's let's arm wrestle. Yeah. How does Luffy's muscle density work? Uh, I think in this case, I think he just didn't, he had it just being regular, just so that way he didn't like have to cheat or anything, since it's just his brother, so. Um... I actually don't really remember the arm wrestling match all that well, but I'm pretty sure Luffy's muscle density is just sort of like how it typically is in this match. That's the that's the one point that like his his power confuses me with that because I'm like how are you how like he can stretch and like muscle pliability is a thing. Cause that's what like some really famous like athletes talk about. Like you want, you want strength, but you don't want to be like so big that like, I can't scratch my back. So it's yeah. this like stretching of it's the bulking and stretching of the muscle, which, you know, not as strong as the rock, but also not as like, mm-hmm. I don't know. We all want to be like Simone Biles. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess that that was one of my confusions is cause like, at no point do I ever look at Luffy and go like, okay, you're an innately strong character other than like, yeah. I can stretch my body and like, you know, like if I'm whipping it and it has to like reconnect and then I shoot it on, like you're shooting like a rubber band, like all of that makes sense. But when he's arm wrestling ace, I'm like, I don't know if it feels like you should win this. Mm-hmm. Um, Chopper's also really badly affected in this, in this arc. Uh, Cause he's, it's it's the desert, and he's not good with the desert, right? Um, oh, can we talk about the kung fu dugongs? We can. They're adorable, and I want one. I I love them. They're just because like otters are like one of my favorite animals, and they're like a little bit inspired by otters, and they're so cute. I I just like how they show up. So the. The what tap, the Straw Hat crew is looking for uh, Crocodile because they figured out that he's the the main villain. Sanji talked to him, mm-hmm. and uh, they they hide they hide the Mary Louie go in this port, and there are these mm-hmm. otters with turtle shells. Yep, who challenge you to a fight, <laughs> and if you win, then they they won't mess with your stuff or whatever. Yeah. And of course, Luffy just beats the crap out of the main one. And so they all <laughs> worship him and are like, nope, now now we all have to be your sensei. And he goes, we got to go do something. And he teaches them like the basic, like you watch any karate kid where it's like, this is how you throw a punch and then kick. Mm-hmm. And it's like the beginning of every, every kata. And that's all he's, he's like, just do this now and you'll be as strong as I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love the dugongs. They barely ever show up after this, but like, oh. there's like one filler arc I think where they show up, but like that's about it. <laughs> oh. But they are so cute. I'm surprised like they aren't like alongside Chopper as being like the massive like mascot character for One Piece because they're they're so cute. Um, they are they are great. Uh. Mm-hmm. And here, like now, it becomes like the <clears throat> the journey to uh, the journey to um, to figure out where like uh, Crocodile is, which leads them to a couple towns. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh, I should also mention that like uh, Chopper gets separated and ends up going to the town where. Uh, so we learn what's going on in Alabasta is they haven't had rain in like three years. Yeah, and there is a rebel army who wants to overthrow the king because they think the king is hoarding the rain for himself. Mm-hmm. And they are being stirred by 
Crocodile in some way to have this fight. And Crocodile's trying to also stir the people with the king, saying like, hey, you need to crush this rebellion uh, to make the country implode on itself. Right. Um, but... And this is... I feel like in other stories, they would probably like make it so like, yeah, the citizens are right in assuming that. But no, it's actually not like the case in Alabasta. It's just like, I think it's just sort of like the king doesn't really know how to handle the situation. I kind of forget like how this part goes, not going to lie. Uh, but it is actually like really really good how they don't just like paint that king as just like being completely evil and just hoarding the wealth for himself unlike certain real world leaders the Uh, and and i think that the way that they do this is like the king is also trying to figure out like what's going on he mm -hmm. vivi left um and she and he's like i have to trust my daughter this is of course what we have to do um because people storm his castle and are like, what are you doing? How are you going to do this? And the guards kind of get uppity with them. And he goes, mm-hmm. stop. Like, these are our people. We will never be a kingdom without people. Yeah. And I, I think it's this, you're right. It's it's beautifully diplomatic where it's like, he's like, all I can do right now is share in your shot suffering. And he's like, hey, whatever we have in the stores, you know, ration out to these people as well. Um, and they're like, there'll be less for the people here. And he goes, our job is to make sure we're protecting our people. Yeah. And that's, and that's what he does. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Like truly a a great King. Um, Oh, lashes, Mm -hmm. lashes, the, uh, uh, the camel. Yes. The camels Um, are also like pretty funny. (laughs) Yeah. He is fantastic. I, I did love the, uh, I did love the, uh, the camel. I thought he was, a, a fantastic uh, he, I thought he was a, a, a fantastic character um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's kind of a joke camel who also like likes women and kind of competed with Sanji in that mark a little bit yeah um, the rebel armor is oh, the rebel armor the rebel army is uh, headed by Koza who is uh, Vivi's like childhood friend and rival yep that that's also like something that I feel like could have just been like a, Oh, they are still enemies or something, but that's also not something that they do. I was expecting there to be a little bit more, especially if they, as they would have grown up together, a little bit more uh, romantic involvement. I was surprised when there wasn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, this series surprisingly doesn't have too, too much romance in it. So whether you respect that or don't, that's that's kind of unique. Um, re- really? Yeah, I guess because it's all the shipping online of characters that I see occasionally. Mm-hmm. Um, that I'm like, I, I expect it to have. I guess, I guess you're right. There's there hasn't been a point yet where you know. It's, oh, Zoro or, oh, Luffy, like, from any of the female characters in a way that's, like, yeah, this especially is... not, like, our main girls, basically. Because they, they don't really have, like, a love interest right now, and I'm going to say this, and I don't think it's a spoiler, but they never really get a huge, like, love interest the way you would think. Where it's just like, oh, yeah, you're definitely going to be uh, who this male character ends up marrying which thank god because i'm tired of characters who are like that um i yeah i can see that i Mm -hmm. I also like earlier this year watched like a bit of naruto shippuden and got reminded of why i don't really like any of the girls in naruto shippuden yeah um they they don't like stand on their own two feet i think the the best Mm -hmm. aspect of like females in any because I had to, uh, there was there's an anime that Mrs. Play and I had started called uh, Itaki no Shinobi. Mm-hmm. First two episodes, all right, we're cool. The third episode, 
we met like three new female characters to the one male character that's like oh no really good. and i was like oh okay it's a harem anime and i was like all right well i'm done with this series and she's like why because there are more females i'm like no like the ratio has to be like power rangers mm-hmm. and then you're still hoping that it, it, it stays like power rangers where it's like okay they can carry their own and they mm-hmm. don't get like washed out because two characters become gods um yeah I was like, they're not here for this. They they are they are here for the fan service that was the first episode. Yeah. Um, which we can talk about fan service at the end of this one because I there was there was a funny scene and I was like, oh shit, they they did this. They went there. Oh, the um, happiness punch. No. Uh, this is this is the very end. We'll we'll, we'll cover that. It's like it's oh, like okay. all right, towards all right, the right. end. end, end. Um, so they kind of have like a thing through the desert where we find out that. Ace is looking for Blackbeard, uh, mm-hmm. fights a bounty hunter. Eh. Um, the bounty hunter was like trying to fight Ace, set up a trap to show his kids that he could be great and they could make money this way. Yep. And, you know, all is fine because I think they were living there for a rough three years and all they wanted was like a full dinner. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get to see Ace like fight the giant crab thing by himself and hard cook it. Yeah. Yeah. Where it takes everyone else to fight it. And then... Um, oh, probably one of the best parts. Let's talk about... There's a point there where uh, they change directions like three times. Because they go to a town uh, where it has... Uh, uh, we, where it's Toto, who is the, who's been like digging water for this town. That like yeah. dried up. And you learn that's where... It was like her best friend's dad, and this is where they went years ago. Yeah, and everyone left this town. All the rebels started there, left this town, and he's still there. Just like I'm going to keep digging up this town. Yeah, keep digging until you hit water, basically. Um, and then like Luffy helps him because he's like, nope. If I have to dig it a thousand times to make sure I can make this, and I love how much Luffy respects people who are just like, no, I don't care how long it takes but this is the mm-hmm. goal that I'm going to hit. Yeah. He, he's a man who respects like other people's goals really, which like is honestly just commendable. And I think that's also partially why I totally believe like in the straw hat pirates, because like Luffy believes in everyone's dreams. Cause I think we like skipped over a scene that happened like way at the beginning where everyone just has like their foot on a barrel saying what their dream is and how they're going to help each other out. Oh my God. I love that dream. Or I'm yep. sorry. Yep. That, that scene where they all like do I, and I've seen all the eight bit things of that, where they're all like doing this, like King of the pirates map, the world, find the all blue world's greatest swordsman. And Usopp was like, I'm going to be wanna, brave. Yeah. <laughs> I want to not be a coward anymore. <laughs> Honestly, like, there are a bunch of posters where they show all that. And every mm-hmm. time I see Usopp's, I'm like, you know what? That is, <clears throat> that is probably like the hardest one of anyone in this group. Yeah. And you're just like, but you're so proud that like his is that simple. It's, it's like, mm-hmm. it's like the serious side of chainsaw, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh Wait, God. That was, that was God, we can, scene. yeah, it, it's just so good. And, pretty much highlights like one of the reasons I love one piece so much, just seeing everybody like each arc get a step closer to like realizing their goal and just like fully completing it. It's just really nice. And I feel like you don't really get to see that in a lot of other series where it's just always like a goal is either fulfilled or it's not pretty much. And for anyone out there who wants to be a leader, when we say Luffy is a great leader, he looks at everyone's strength and goes like, okay, here are my deficiencies. <clears throat> and mm-hmm. everyone else, he's like, because when he meets Zoro, he goes, you want to be the world's greatest swordsman? I could use one of those on my pirate crew. Yeah. And it's just like, it's like, I'm not going to ever say you can't be the world's greatest swordsman or that you can't be stronger than me. All I know is that I want you on my team because that's mm-hmm. what you're going to be. And like, you see that in a lot of like straw hat recruitments where it's always like, huh, we really do need this thing in our crew. Like we need someone to navigate for us. We need a chef. We need a 
we need a doctor basically and that's how we get like most of our straw hat crew i and i i actually <clears throat> really uh um i i really liked i really like that as his reasoning for why he asks it also there was there, there have been a couple points like he asked the guy stuck in the chest like hey join us come with us mm -hmm. on this and the guy's like no my treasure's here yeah he's like he's like my journey's over i, I found what i wanted to find and, and he did mm -hmm. um and then there have been a couple others where he's like hey come join us but yeah. it, it feels like you can only really join them if if you have one it does need to be something to offer yeah and two, you, you have to be, like, a person of conviction to, to be like, no, like, this is what we're going for. Like, they're serious business. And if you're not serious business, then they're not going to be able to, like, bring you along. Um, uh, and I guess we should now talk about, so then the last, like, four or five remaining people, which was Miss Christmas, uh, uh, Mr. Four, Mr. Four. Four was that the baseball guy? Yeah, yeah, that's that's Babe. Um, named uh, after Babe Ruth. Oh, I can see that now, Mister. And yeah. he's big, like Babe Ruth would have been. Mm -hmm. Um, Mister uh, Two, Mister Two, and, and Miss Miss Double Finger and Mister One. Was uh, wait, which was Miss Double Finger? Uh, she was the partner for Mr. One, the spike girl. Okay. The, okay. The, now we can start going into other questions I have about powers. Um, <laughs> because, so what happens is now we're just building up to like the actual fight. Um, mm -hmm. I like all the straw hats being captured in the sea bars that hold the property of the ocean. Yep. Um, because Smoker even gets caught in there and he just sits in there like willy nilly. Yeah. Um, and I let... Um, before we get into that, uh, they, they eventually have to escape. They have to get the keys out of the, uh, the keys out of, uh, the crocodile. Cause they, mm -hmm. crocodile's a horrible person feeds the key to the alligator. So that way they can't yep. escape to fight him. Mm -hmm. But only one person, uh, of our main crew didn't actually get, uh, captured or actually two, I think didn't get captured. Uh, Sanji and Chopper. Yep. Everyone else was just caught, but because they never really, this is actually something that's actually really cool that I didn't even fully notice until like I went back years ago and like looked at all of this saga again, mm -hmm. but like Baroque works never actually met Sanji and because Chopper was such a new addition to the crew, they never met him either. Huh. And I think they do that when uh, Mr. Two shows up uh, and he's like, here are all the people on the ship that you should be looking for. Um, Wasn't Sanji inside the boat? Sanji was in the kitchen. Yeah. While <laughs> Mr. Two was there. So Mr. Two would have never seen Sanji. Yeah, he was in the kitchen cooking and uh, Vivi hid because she recognized him. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so they escape. Uh, Smoker was in there and they could have drowned. And I think uh, Smo or Zoro is ordered to save Smoker. Mm -hmm. And he goes, why'd you save me? He goes, captain's orders. That's literally all he says. He goes, my captain said to save you. I followed yep. my orders. <laughs> um, and I, I'm still trying to piece together. Like, what do you think that means? Because Smoker after this kind of leaves them alone. And at the end of the, at the end of after everything concludes of this arc, he's talking to uh, the the captain with the lockup abilities. Uh, yeah. And he tells his first lieutenant to get stronger, or his, like, uh, ensign to get stronger. But, like... Yeah. Like I said, I think Smoker's a barometer, but I can't figure out what kind of barometer he is. Because he saw the original Gold D. Roger get executed. And was like... And it's like, it's like... And that spurred him to join the Navy... But I'm like, are you a secret pirate that's actually just here to say, like, hey, you're not piratey enough to be a pirate? Or, like, I cannot figure him out. So, I think, so basically, 
Smoker does have like a strong sense of justice. And I think he kind of felt that like, yeah, no, my best bet right now is to just team up with Luffy. I can deal with him another day. And Crocodile right now is the immediate threat who is going against the government because he's a government hired pirate, basically. And he just kind of figures, okay, because Crocodile is so off his rocker, he's the one who I need to personally like take care of right now. Not so much um, someone like Luffy. We mm-hmm. can't really have someone like Luffy um just we can have we can afford to have luffy run around for a bit we can't really afford to have crocodile run around for a bit since we know like crocodile's goal in all this is to find like the ancient weapon basically Mm -hmm. to basically just turn on the world and rule it under his sandy iron fist but i mean And Luffy, he also doesn't really like the Marines all that much, but he's willing to just sort of let Smoker just so that way it gives him another chance to, like, fight Crocodile and win and basically free Alabasta. Again, he can afford to have someone like Smoker running around and chasing them for another arc, but they can't really afford that with Crocodile. So... It is sort of something that I really like in One Piece where like who people who you would normally be enemies end up like teaming up together to defeat an immediate threat. It's something that is going to happen a lot more often. And I I honestly, I love it. (laughs) It does feel it it does feel like they are all very pragmatic. You're right. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, okay, less for the two evils. Uh, We need to do this. Smoker's like, I need backup because I can't handle uh, Crocodile on my own. Although, Mm -hmm. if I'm thinking of their devil fruit abilities, yeah, he could. Because Smoke doesn't have moisture. So I think, I don't know. I'd have to see how that one would play out. But I think that that would be a a decent enough fight. Um, The... uh, But that one was was really cool. Um, what about the scene where uh, Vivi's constantly like, I don't want people to die. I need to save my country. No one needs to die. And Luffy sits down in the middle of the desert and goes, you know what? We're done. Straw hats are out. You don't, get, like, you know, figure this out on your own. You, if, you, if you're just going to go die to, you know, save your country, we're not, we're not going. We're not going to die for your country, basically. Yeah. Because that's not their that's not their main objective, really. At the end of the day, their they're objective there to get paid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're just there to get paid. They're they are there to beat up Crocodile because they know that he's the one immediately stopping them from just being able to leave. But at the same time. They've had they've traveled with Vivi now for a while, so they can't really just like leave her in a dying country Mm -hmm. just to die. But at the same time, Vivi's whole like, I don't want anyone to die. Well, yeah, it's an ideal like thought to have in a time like this. It's not really all that realistic. So she just kind of needed to like have that like slap in the face just to wake her up and just realize okay not everyone's gonna be saved but that doesn't mean like nobody can be saved basically and i i thought that was actually really a a really good take for for luffy to be like look we're we are people of conviction and this is what it's gonna be yeah um uh, and after that, we kind of get the new, the new resolve. They're all going to go fight, and I guess now we can start talking about uh, Luffy the, versus Crocodile round one. Which you're right, that is that's barely a fight, honestly. <laughs> that that fight makes 
And I was, I was kind of going to compare this to like the only other fight I've seen in an anime that's kind of like this is the dodge or the ball match between Kilowa and oh uh, the Bone and Netero. Yes, him. Where when Netero is introduced, you learn that he can kind of make them sense him in a different spot. He moves yeah. really fast and he's insanely strong and he's just he's bored mm-hmm. and he sits there and goes, he's like, if you guys take this ball from me, I will make you hunters. I'll give you your license on the spot. And yeah, Gone's like, really? Um, and you're like, okay. This, and, and you know, that, that entire thing happens and that you learn that it's like, he's not using his right leg or his left hand. Yeah. And, uh, Gon, Gon's at the end of it all after they all feel that he goes okay well I at least want to make you use two hands so you're using like 75% of as of right now what I know can be used in this world right mm-hmm. yeah and, there's not a lot of fights where like the protagonist immediately just loses to the villain I can think of like a couple times that it happens in Jojo's Bizarre Adventure uh, part five is like Bruno Bucciarati versus uh, the boss of Passion. Uh, and he just like really just kind of loses, barely makes it out of there. Uh, like part six has like Jolene versus Enrico Pucci, where he's basically just like, yeah, I'm just going to leave. I, I basically done all I've needed to accomplish Here's like that thing you've been looking for. Have fun. By the way, I killed your friend. <laughs> I was like, I, I think the only thing I think of is like Dragon Ball, like Dragon Ball, not Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball. Yeah, Dragon uh, Ball. Tien destroys Goku at one point, mm-hmm. and Jackie Chun destroys Goku at one yeah. or two points. Mm-hmm. And that's that's really about it. Yeah. It's it's an extremely ballsy move that, like, and you kind of know that, like, Luffy's not, like, dead permanently. Yeah. But, like, oh, my God, he's out of commission for a while now. So we can't really, like, have, like, the Goku effect of just, like, yeah, Goku's going to show up. He's going to kill people. It's it's about a day. It's about a day, maybe two uh- Maybe longer. Might be, I'm going to say at most it's three days. Yeah. Um, where he gets rescued by Pell. Because we got we get to see Crocodile's ability. So one, it's sand. Mm-hmm. Two, he can dehydrate shit. Yeah. That to me, it's like, what, what can sand do? Well, sand can, like, you put sand on something, it will dry it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the sand will take the moisture out of things. Yeah. That is an exceptional ability to like especially in an area that has no water and you learn that he's like no i don't want this area to have water and luffy's like you're scared of water and he's like kind of but also it's not like that it's not like that i just want to win easily (laughs) yeah and when he beats luffy he he's literally like okay i've stabbed you um, oh, and, and I, I've created quicksand and I've dehydrated you. Like, he's like, I didn't go check the body, but there was no, like, come back when you're stronger. It was like, okay, um, you're done. I, I think you're dead yeah. and I'm just going to, like, go about. Yep. Um, also, you're right. Flying, how can you also create a sandstorm? I feel like that has yeah. a lot to do with wind. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. <laughs> but to learn that he was, like, like throwing up sand into the wind to create like a tornado. Uh, Mm -hmm. I wonder if he was actually like spinning the sand and like the wind picks up with it and carries it because they follow north to south and he was destroying the town to the south where the old guy was constantly digging for water. Yeah. Oh, that man is merciless. He, he's brutal, like downright. Just like no mercy (laughs) will go scorched earth if he has to. Yeah, because when he's when he's talking about it, he's like he wants this war to happen because he wants the country to eat itself, so it has no other options. Yeah, and I'm and like, then, oh, 
And he would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for those a meddling pirates. straw hat and his first lady. <laughs> okay. Because we barely talked about her. And it and that makes me kind of mad, if I'm being honest. Oh, that we haven't talked about her? A little. She's okay. like one of my favorites, actually. Okay. Well, let's let's jump ahead here. Be, so I was mm-hmm. trying to do it like more chronological than last time. Um okay. so we learned that even you know crocodile has a has a partner yeah um miss all sunday that's what it was it was all sunday um so okay her and double finger these are the other Mm -hmm. questions i have about powers okay so double finger can create spikes right she can and it it can be anywhere on her body out of her body what have you it even like Mm -hmm. changes her, her clothes yep when she's fighting Nami, because everyone fights all the all the straw hats fight somebody and they have to like fight around that, she's yeah. able to kick through walls with her spikes. Right. She's able but they're just spikes. Like her partner was like, No, I can create like he can literally create knives or like turn any part of his mm-hmm. body into a part of a knife. And as Zoro finds out, he's like, because of how he can do it, he can literally mean that there is no there's no blunt side. It's all just a sharp knife. He has to focus. Mm-hmm. Yes. Miss. All so side. I think. Go ahead. I think the question very much boils down to uh, what are the spikes made of, and I don't think we're ever really given that much of a clear answer with Miss Doublefinger. Okay. Miss All Sunday ate the the f- uh, bloom bloom fruit. I think it is. Yeah. And she can make. Part she, she says parts of her body yep. bloom on any surface that she touches. I don't think yes. she can touch it. She can just make it go there. Um, yeah. We only see her use her hands. Yes. And when she's fighting the first lieutenant of the of the mm-hmm. of of, uh, of Smoker's team, who is also like wants to get all the like the the super swords. Um, yeah. The ancient swords. Uh, mm-hmm. She, like, starts choking her out with these arms that she's on her. She also then does it to a bunch of soldiers. And she, okay. at the door, she's easily able to throw off soldiers who are trying to open up a door. Mm-hmm. How, how does that work? Because you said that, uh, oh, God, what's the, what's the author's name? Um, Ichiro Oda. Oda only draws two kinds of women. And you said, and we all know what the favorite is. The yeah. favorite has no muscle mass. <laughs> so how how is she able to because she feels insanely She's strong. Really, really good at her devil fruit is the answer. Do they but they, they never do they ever go into that? Do they ever go into Miss All Sunday and how powerful she actually is? Yes. Yes. Okay, because I, I know she's got she's got the seventy nine uh berry seventy nine million berry bounty yeah. on her because she sank an armada. She did. At like eleven years old. Yeah. She's, she's also the oldest, I think. She's like thirty something. I think she is the oldest out of a lot of the main cast, yeah. Why she your favorite? Why is she my favorite? Yes. Oh, honey, you're not ready for that answer. <laughs> if if you're if you were like bawling during shit like uh like Shushu from Orange Town, Nami's backstory, Chopper's backstory, if those were like a punch to the gut to you, the shit that's the reason why I love her so much is going to be like getting hit with a baseball bat that's covered in barbed wire. That's rusting. (laughs) Like we'll get to like her whole like backstory in a few arcs, but you're not going to be fucking ready. (laughs) Like those are going to be like when you're just like, okay, I'm about to get to her backstory. I'm, going to be like do not watch this in public (laughs) because 
something for the audience members at home. Once we like finished like the first One Piece podcast episode here, he was just like, I'm like, after like we hung up and everything, I was just like, all right, I'm going to have dinner with my parents tonight. And you were just like, all right, I'm going to watch more One Piece tonight. And I was basically at my parents' place and I was uh, just kind of like listening to a story of that my dad was saying. And then I got like a buzz on my phone. Look it up. It's a text from you. And you. <laughs> it's just a single message that's just like, I am crying into my ramen. <laughs> <laughs> and that I was trying not to laugh, but I like quickly like texted like, is it Nami's backstory? And you were like, it's Nami's backstory. And then like the day afterwards... I was out like getting groceries, get another text from you. And uh, you, it was just, uh, have you ever cried on a treadmill? And I'm just like, <laughs> Luffy put his hat on Nami's head. And you're just like, Luffy put the hat on Nami's head. And the rest of the straw hats are like right behind her. And they are all going to go kill Arlong. <laughs> you're like, do you want to punch Arlong in the dick? And I'm like, yeah, I want to punch Arlong in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and God. like I think I got like something similar to that when you got to Chopper's backstory. Like oh, when like this isn't gonna be the next arc that you face or next saga, but like the saga afterwards, we're gonna talk about Nico goddamn Robin and give her the respect that she deserves. <laughs> Cause she is awesome. You are going to see so much how much she rules and why she's a favorite of mine and a favorite of a lot of other people. I, uh, I, and like her character, cause, um, one, I know that she was, she was misleading Arlong from the start, or I'm sorry, not Arlong, um, Crocodile Crocodile. from the start. Um, uh, so, so fast forward, uh, one, the second fight between, uh, Luffy and, uh, Crocodile is, Mm -hmm. is also great. Um, yeah. Luffy learns, hey, if I wet my knuck, if I wet my knuckles or I get him wet, mm-hmm. he can't dissolve it. Um, yeah. So he he like mists his knuckles, um, and has mm-hmm. like a, a a tank on his back, and that's just how he starts pounding on him. When yeah. that gets broken and he's cut up and bleeding, he yep. punches him and he goes, "How are you doing that?" And he goes, "Oh, good. My blood works just as well." And you're just yeah. Like, what metal shit are we going here, Luffy? <laughs> oh, trust me, shit goes very metal. When it comes to like some of the final fights in this series, <laughs> they they will either be like the darkest shit that you could probably go to, or it would just be like some kind of bo 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 ass shit where like the stupidest answer is the correct one. <laughs> and I, it, it's like I, I've been so so excited for it. It's been like really really fun uh, to see that and. Uh, so also when they go down there, not um so what happens is uh the the king is captured, Vivi can't stop the rebellion, like you learn that Baroque works is in both sides. There's some in the army, there's some in the rebel army, and they are like firing cannons to like obscure mm-hmm. what's actually going on. Um the town's set to explode and there's like a cannon in the clock tower that's gonna blow it all up. Um but Arlong wants this weapon. Um the Pell phone, the Pellet phone, or something like that. The um, Pluton? The oh no, the Poneglyph. The Poneglyph, yeah, Poneglyph. And I, I don't know if I ever learned what it really does. Uh, we'll get there. But uh, Nico Robin is like going to take him to do that. Mm-hmm. And they go beneath the. Uh, she thinks it's something else than than what he thinks it is. Um, right. And she goes down into this catacomb, this old like tomb, uh, and Luffy's down there and fighting a crocodile. And she's like, okay, it's not here. This isn't what I was looking for because she's looking for the equivalent of, I'm going to say the, uh, um, oh God, what's the famous stone in, in, uh, from Egypt? Rosetta Uh, stone. She's looking for like a Rosetta stone. Right. Um, so question for you. Mm-hmm. She said that spot was her last chance. Earlier in the Alabasta arc, Luffy, Zoro, and S- Chopper, I think, fall mm-hmm. through a ceiling into a place with a giant rock in it. Was that supposed to be the Rosetta Stone? And if she would have been out there, she probably would have found it? 
I don't think that is the case. Okay. But because she does, she does have a fascination with the poneglyphs, and she does want to read the poneglyphs because it's in a language that she can read, but not that many other people can actually read. Okay, so it's it's a language. It's not like a, mm-hmm. it's not like a, a super weapon, but it, it might be an understanding of something. Maybe. Okay. It's still. This is also something that, like. Even manga reader, readers to this day are like trying to piece together what the poneglyphs are like supposed to be doing a little bit. Like we have like more understanding now, but like there's still a lot of mysteries and a lot of mis and a lot of mysteries that are gonna pop up uh, because of these. <laughs> Not gonna lie. And I know you said what where you've got what two arcs left three arcs left uh we're on the final quote-unquote saga so however many arcs this final saga is gonna be i think it's gonna be at least three okay or four maybe more likely four um because we got a lot of ground to cover before everything is wrapped up with a neat little bow uh because i just started season two um, technically, which is the first patient, like the untold story, the Nico. So Nico joins the team. So what ends up happening is, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the straw hats, they end up saving, uh, everyone at the end. Mm-hmm. You guys can like watch this. Uh, oh, the point that I really liked with Nami, they do a bathhouse scene, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Sanji's like, where's the ladies' bath? And the king's like, oh, it's literally like right over there. Mm-hmm. And and like Nami's washing, you know, she's washing Vivi's back because that's what you do in bathhouses. Yeah. And she notices they're all there. And she goes, oh, do you guys want to see? 100,000 berries a piece and just turns around and is like, here you go. And I'm like, woman, ha-. I'm like, okay, this is the start of OnlyFans. Got it. it would be, yeah, she would be thriving on OnlyFans. I, yeah, absolutely like her character for that is just like being as like mm-hmm. hardcore into what they want is, is, is yeah. brilliant. Um, by the way, it, that, that becomes a thing that comes up every now and again. And it's actually considered one of her attacks called happiness punch. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's where you got that from. Yeah. Um, Question is, is can happiness punch kill Goku? Uh, no. Don't seriously consider this. No. <laughs> Look, I've proven I proved in in Fortnite that I can kill Goku as like generic Fortnite guy. So uh, the only oh, reason okay. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no that it can't kill Goku is because uh, it's not an act. Like, he would view it as an attack, and when it didn't physically hurt him, uh, that would be it. Okay. Because, yeah, so um, I was thinking about that. No. Um, But the Straw Hats give Vivi the chance to join them. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to get away. Uh, We'll swing by this area, uh, and that'll be it. And that's when we get to learn that Bond Clay is uh is like the realist real guy because when they're yeah. getting trapped by the navy he's like he's like don't worry you guys go pick up your friend he goes because i'm gonna be the first he's like i get to be the first friend of the straw hats with my ship under your flag mm-hmm. makes his face dress i love how he dresses everyone up like opposite to look like members of the straw hats <laughs> the one super jack dude with the, the bad nami wig and like wearing her halter top but he's just like like cut i'm just like yes thank you for leaning <laughs> into it <laughs> it's great i love i love bon clay like i said when, when at the end when he's like how could i ever like want anyone to like be like that and the fact that sanji's like hey you as a dancer is like you fighting with your legs is as good if not better than me um, mm-hmm. 
and then they they go to to see Vivi, and uh, Vivi's like, "Hey, thank you guys for everything. I hope we can be friends in the future, but I need to stay with my country." Like, what kind of yeah, person? It makes a lot of sense. And I, I, I think also kind of unforgivable for the anime for switching OPs like in the middle of the arc to show that Vivi doesn't actually become a crew member. You're, I, so I didn't watch it until the fight, the second fight with Crocodile started. After everyone mm-hmm. else had their first fight, I started watching it. Um, yeah. Because when I would scroll down to it, it said, like, Nico joins the crew. So I was like, oh, okay. So whoever Nico is, and I didn't know who she was at that time. Yeah. Or I did. And I was like, She's okay, that person. She's um, Well, I guess early on, there was a point where she, like, lets them go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we don't know what she can do. And I was like, oh, shit, you're a... Uh, you, you, like you're going to be a crew member. Like you, something about you is just going to be a crew member. Um, okay. But uh, I, so the opening, the new opening was the Yeah. Uh, I, I, I still prefer Wonderland. And I like that when they're leaving and they're doing the fists up and like from behind and like, you could see the X's see because the X on their hands, which we didn't really explain here, but it was just sort of a case of, having an X that we wrap around that we have sort of just marked on our arms. Then we wrap it up in a bandage. So that way, uh, Mr. Two doesn't like, uh, disguise himself as one of us. Yes. And fool us into like killing each other or something. Yeah. That was, that one was really, really good. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm, I'm hoping, and I didn't see it in, so I, I'm actually really excited for Odyssey. Um, yeah. I almost want to play Odyssey, but I, I think it would spoil way too much. It probably will, because Odyssey seems to be like, oh, you get to explore all these past areas from One Piece. And it's like, oh, I I need to tell Mr. Play not to play this game. <laughs> yeah, uh, and but I'm like, the only thing I wanted to see, because I, I, when you saw Vivian, it's like, we get to go back. And I'm like, oh, I know why Alabasta is important. Yay, we get to go back to Alabasta. But I'm like, I don't know what yeah, that means yet. Vivian again. But I'm like, I, I'm like, I hope, I, I was actually really hoping that there was going to be like, they were just always going to have that X in the future. Like, no, they went and got it tattooed off screen. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's one of the few things that I am super hoping for, is that like, nope, why do you guys all have an X tattooed on you? And it's like, it, it's it's for a friend. Ah, uh, but and yeah, that's... unfortunately they don't, but like, I also know a lot of One Piece fans who do get like the X tattooed on their arm just to, just to like pay homage to that, homage to that scene, basically. Yeah. Um, it, it looks really good. And honestly, so... Uh, Crunchyroll, if you guys do want to watch One Piece, this is not a sponsored podcast, uh, mm-hmm. but every episode is on uh, Crunchyroll, um, and they yeah. do have it. So if you want to sit here and watch the... I'm actually watching it in the original animation style, um, but you can watch the HD remake. Um, so it'll be like, hey, here's the original East Blue, 1 through 161, and then it's like 62 through 135, and you can watch the HD version. Um mm-hmm. I figured I was just going to watch it, you know, the way, uh, the, way, the way, yeah, the way God intended. Yeah. And when it, when it, up, when it, when it updates and it gets the, what season does it update at? Where's, where's the glow up that everyone talks about? Uh, what do you mean by the glow up? I heard there's a time skip because anime. Uh, that's like halfway through. <laughs> so that's season like five or six. Oh, uh, ish. Let seasons. me let me check. Let me check. Okay, I'll check Crunchyroll for you. Uh, so that way you don't accidentally see something you're not supposed to. Uh, I'm I'm only looking at the like I can I can see like the Fishman Island Punk Hazard, but it doesn't mean anything right yet. Uh, okay. So yeah, season season six is like the end of the is like the end of like the quote unquote pre time skip era. That is, that is all I, I will say. Okay. Then I'm going to, I'm going to ask some questions for foreshadowing and we'll wrap this up. Cause like I said, this is, this is a long one. You guys get a two hour podcast for the month of November. Um, <laughs> the nothing happened scene. 
Is that pre time oh, skip? Uh, yes, it's pre time skip. Is that season three? No. Okay. Um. Uh, the nothing happened. I know that I I just know that like that's referenced in a lot of songs I listen to. They'll be like turn around and be like nothing happened, and I'm like, okay. And all I've heard is it's 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 like an epic scene. Um. And I take it the the skip is also like when uh Zoro goes to like train to get his super swords. Uh the time skip is where hap- a lot of training does happen in the time skip. I will say that much. Uh Zoro like you'll see him get new swords, don't worry. <laughs> oh, he gets new swords? He get he gets a new sword every now and again. I've I've seen I've seen pictures and like fan art and I'm wondering how true the fan art is so I'm not going to ask questions on that one. Yeah. Um, okay, and then the last question I have before we get out of here, uh, none of the uh, none of the the Dragon Ball Z movies are canon unless you watch the uh, uh, the abridged series. Are any of the One Piece movies canon? Uh, no. So basically, One Piece movies are kind of weird in that uh, some of them are recaps of, like, the entire saga. I would not recommend them unless you've already watched or read them, like, properly in the anime or in the manga. Uh, so those ones are, like, canon asterisk. It, they leave out a lot of stuff that happens, but... It is what it is. What else can you do? You're shortening something like Alabasta into a two hour movie, which sounds like hell to work on. <laughs> By the way, we just shortened shortened Alabasta into a two hour arc and we skipped or er, podcast and we skipped a lot. Yeah, we skipped a lot. <laughs> um, and then some of them are actually uh, just filler that is actually written by Oda himself. Uh I'm pretty sure the upcoming One Piece film Red is something that Oda wrote as well as like some of the other movies as well. They're kind of a mixed bag. I wouldn't really recommend you watch them that much. Uh, There are a few that are good, though. Uh, The ones that certain people bring up are like Strong World, Film Gold and Film Z. Those are like probably like the top three. Uh, I know uh, gold was, but that's like after time skip because everyone has their like, yeah, they're really good looking animation and everything else. Yeah, and Film Z is also post time skip. Strong World isn't, but don't watch it yet. Uh, watch it when you're like nearing the time skip. I would say. Okay, I wonder where uh, are any of these movies in in Crunchyroll? I don't know. I don't. I think, like, a couple of them are, but, like, not all of them. Crunchyroll is very weird when it comes to anime movies, because I know they don't really have, like, any of the Dragon Ball ones. I don't know if they have any of the Naruto ones, because I don't really care that much to look it up. And the One Piece ones, I know they have one that's, like, post-time skip. And then... Like... Heart of Gold... They have some of the recap ones, like episode of East Blue and episode of Skypea, which is like your next uh, huge saga. Uh, episode of Sabo, that's also not something that you should really be watching right now. Oh, uh, and uh, so also because I I, um, I want to make sure we do this. Uh, we get to we did get to see for like four episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, we got to check back in uh, with Kobe. Yes. And Kobe's so, mm-hmm. so fun fact about that one. I think I said this to you in a text message, but in the manga, there are these things called cover stories where uh, the cover page for a chapter has like a, instead of having like a picture of like Luffy and whoever accompanies Luffy this chapter, instead it's like, a character from a previous arc going through like their lives after like the arc ends that they were introduced in. So Kobe actually got one and Buggy actually got one and they 
both basically got to get their uh, little arc in the anime. And these are the only times when the cover stories actually get animated. So please tell me Kobe comes back. Wink. Okay. All right. Well, before I start asking you to spoil things for us, we'll go ahead and wrap this one here. So does this mean the next one will be after the, what looks to be called the, cause I'm, I'm, I'm watching the filler. I'm not, I'm not skipping anything. Cause the filler, the filler has been about as good as the, uh, my hero filler, um, sky <laughs> Island arc. Yes, yeah, Sky Island would be the next like huge saga. And luckily for us, that's only like 70 episodes. Hard. No. <laughs> that's still going to be long as shit, but at the very least it's only going to be like two islands that we're concerned with instead of like five. <laughs> okay. Cuz Water also looks like it's over 100 episodes. Water 7. Oh, that's going to be a that's probably not something we're going to be able to fit into one podcast episode. I'm going to be completely honest. Okay. All right. All righty. Well, if you guys enjoyed this, you can follow us on uh, iTunes, Twitter. You can follow you can follow the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, uh, Google Podcast, uh, iHeartRadio. Uh, we are available on all those places as well as on our YouTube channel. Um, and of course, if you want to follow. Uh, up with Quiggles and what he is doing. Where can we do that? Uh, I write articles for Medium. I've sort of gone on a huge break because I'm still working on a long-ass JoJo article that is taking longer than childbirth uh, because I'm reading through the entirety of it and my plan is to just have a huge like recap and review of all eight parts of JoJo. Considering that's 900 uh, chapters of manga that I'm reading... It's going to take a while. Uh, if anybody's asking, by the time this podcast comes up, I'm probably going to be done with Steel Ball Run and moving on to Jujolian. So I'm in the home stretch, at least. Glad to hear it. I do look forward to reading your articles. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, remember that you guys are all winners out there. Have a good one and keep it weird. Keep it weird.